Thank you so much for clicking on this video. You can call me Twinkle, call me She is Twinkle, or call me Antoinette. As long as you're calling my name and watching the video, that's all that matters to me. Y'all, welcome back to my channel. I am here to review episode five and six of Love is Blind. This is season six. We are progressing through this experiment, y'all. It's getting crazy, but... Before I get into it, like, 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 like the video, subscribe, because I will be back for more. Anywho, let's jump right in. So the episode starts off. It is titled, She Lied to Me. I wonder who lied. Y'all, we already know who lied, but I'm going to just play this story out for y'all. So, starts off with Jimmy and Chelsea. When he walks in, the first thing that he says is straight out of a breakup and in here with you. He told her that he loves the fact that she allows him to move at his pace. She goes to the beat of his drum. And basically, what I'm trying to do is propose to you. He gets down on one knee. He proposes. She melts to the floor. She says, yes, and I am devastated. Because what about Trevor? Now, that date is over, so she walks into this date with Trevor. She's tearful. He's caught off guard. He's not expecting tears. At that point, she tells Trevor, I can't give you all of me right now. Pause. Why would she say, I can't give you all of me right now? You just said yes to somebody else's proposal. So are you holding Trevor as a backup in case it doesn't work out? Are you planning to give him some of you? That was confusing. He responds by saying, are you giving it to someone else? She says, yes. He said, do you have a reason why? She said, no, I don't. So then he asked her the question that we were all wondering, if I went first, would you have said yes to me? She was speechless. He said, well, that's not a good answer for his sake. Chelsea is getting all emotional. Trevor is very mature about it. He told her that I'm happy for you. As long as you're happy, I'm happy. And I believe Trevor when he says that. It's hard to be happy for somebody when you wanted them to be happy with you. But I believed him. He's a good guy. He just simply asked her if she could leave out first because he doesn't want to go back to the men's quarters and cry in front of everyone. And he just basically needs a moment to himself. She gave him that. She feels bad. I personally think that Chelsea's going to regret this decision, but okay. Then we move to Jeremy and Sarah Ann. What I can respect about Jeremy is that he didn't waste any time. Jeremy didn't even go and sit down on the couch in his date. Jeremy stood behind the couch, leaned over the couch, and he said, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm moving forward with Laura. So Sarah Ann is completely caught off guard. Sarah Ann says, is it something that I did wrong? As if this is an interview, as if she is a candidate applying for a job position. And he said, no, you didn't do anything wrong. It's just Laura for me. So I wanted to get straight to the point. I owed you that at least. And you're a great person. There's nothing bad I can say about you. All right. So let's move right along. Sarah Ann goes back to the women's quarters and she sees Laura. She didn't waste any time. She said, it's you. It's not me. But I'm happy for you. I don't know if she's actually happy for her, but she said she was happy for her. At that point, Laura gets up. Laura goes and hugs her. Laura said, I didn't want to say anything as to who I was dating. And she said, no, it's not a big deal. Sarah Ann said, no, it is not a big deal. I'll have my moment. And I don't know if Laura caught that. Why would she say, I'll have my moment? What do you mean? That was... Ah, that was off-putting. Sarah Ann has obviously watched this show and she knows, don't worry about it. I'm going to see this man again. I will have my moment. Well, in the midst of that, Laura wasn't bothered by it. Laura then goes into her date with Jeremy, Jeremy with an A, and she sees flowers and they're waiting for her. We already know that's a telltale sign. He gets on one knee, proposes to her. She's super excited. He's excited. They're now engaged. We wrapping up really quick here. 
So now that we have this proposal that Jimmy has done with Chelsea, we are quickly getting to the reveal. We see Jimmy in his confessional and he is saying, I've never been so sure about Jessica. And he stops himself and he says, oh, no, no, no. I've never been so sure about Chelsea in my life. You unconsciously said what you were really thinking. You are going to go and meet your future wife being Chelsea, but you're still thinking about Jessica. Is that not a sign? Okay. We see the doors open, Jimmy on one side, Chelsea on another. Jimmy has that nervous smile on his face. Chelsea charges at Jimmy, like not full speed ahead, but she literally ran to him. It wasn't a cute run. It looked like she was charging at him. She looked like this character off of Trolls. Oh, I can't think of her name. Chelsea's mouth dropped open like, oh my gosh, you're so hot. That is how her mouth dropped open. And she literally charged at him and was like, you're so cute. She's looking at him and her face is scrunching up like she wants to eat him. Like, oh my gosh. Like it was just, it was a lot. I'm like, Chelsea, keep it cool. Be cute. You got on the dress. He's the one that has to get on one knee. What are you doing? She was just overwhelming him with kisses. And he, in my opinion, seemed very underwhelmed. I think he expected to see Megan Fox and she was certainly not Megan Fox. And he is acting nervous. You can tell that he's trying to play it cool, act natural. He gives her the ring. She's shaking. She's so excited. So then they sit down. At that point, she's super excited. She's like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. You're so cute. And he's like, yeah, you are like gor gorgeous. Y'all know that Jimmy is bad at lying. Jimmy makes it worse because he tells her while they're sitting down, wow, this is really exciting. Um, it's weird because I almost went home this morning. And then Chelsea's facial expression changed because why would you tell the woman that you proposed to and that you're now seeing for the first time that you almost went home on the day that you're supposed to see her, as if you were regretting the decision that you made. Then we see Jimmy in his confessional, and you can tell this confessional is being done right after the reveal because he says in the confessional, she definitely lied to me on how she looks, hence the episode title, she lied to me. He said, she definitely lied to me on how she looks, but it really doesn't matter. I'm very attracted to her. I can work with that. And he doesn't even sound convincing when he says that. But I honestly wouldn't want a man to say about me like, mm, I can work with that. What do you mean you can work with that? That is not complimentary. I can work with that. Like, oh, uh, it's decent. I wanted a steak, but I'll take the spam. I can work with that for now. Then we go to the next reveal because Netflix is wrapping this up real quick. We have Jeremy and we have Laura. He's excited. He looks satisfied with what he sees. And Laura drops down to the floor. As a woman watching this, when she dropped down to the floor, I did not look at that as a positive thing. I did not look at that as an, oh my gosh, I'm so lucky. I think she dropped down to the floor thinking, oh shoot. He is not what I expected, but I'm committed to it. So now I'm just, you got this, get it together. So then she stands back up. They have hugs and kisses. He seems satisfied. I'm really unsure of her reaction, but she's going with it. Now off to the DR, the Dominican Republic. We have five couples engaged now, Johnny and Amy, Clay and AD. Jeremy and Laura, Jimmy and Chelsea, and Kenneth and Brittany. So Netflix does a quick montage of a bunch of different scenes where we're seeing them interact with one another, arriving in the DR, getting into their rooms. What I can say that I noticed is that the rooms were really nice. Netflix was not cheap on the budget. Everything is all good. So the first couple that we have some real time with is Jimmy and Chelsea. And right off the bat, I know that this is not going to be the greatest trip for them in the DR. 
Why? Because when Jimmy sees Chelsea and they're in their suite, one of the first thing he says to her is that, oh, I forgot what you look like for a minute. What? Excuse me? But that's your fiance. You're supposed to be so in love with her. You just proposed to her. That's not a good sign. Then he starts talking to Chelsea about, I have a bone to pick with you because... In my last date with Jessica, she was really upset. She said that somebody came back and told her that I had told you I loved you and all of this stuff. And you said you weren't talking about our dates with other people. And then Chelsea starts explaining herself saying, no, I didn't go announce it to everybody. I just talked to Laura. I don't know, maybe Laura said something to her. And I'm thinking, Jimmy, what does that matter? That is in the past. Why do you have a bone to pick with her over a girl that you're no longer with? It doesn't matter. You made your decision, but you're still thinking about it, the situation, y'all argument and her. That is not good. You're planting that seed in Chelsea's mind that you're bothered by that. And I think he's going to regret that, but I'll just put that on ice. Moving right along to our next couple, we have Jeremy and Laura. They have a lot of playful kisses in their bed. They're giggly and playful just like they were in the pods. And his words, not mine, he says he's looking forward to having a magical night with Laura. Then we get to the next couple, Johnny and Amy. Their scene is not really exciting. She said he's not typically her type, but he is handsome to her and she's just looking forward to that connection continuing to grow. Enough of them, we get to Clay and AD. He's trying so hard to not pay attention to the physical, but when they're out of the country in the DR and it's hot and they're in their private pool suite and AD has on a swimsuit, he just can't help himself. He said, her superpower is when she takes her clothes off. So he is trying his hardest, you can tell in these scenes, to look her in the eyes and not look at her body. But he's hype. He's excited. One thing that was a red flag to me with Clay is that they're having a conversation and he tells AD that he didn't know that men wore rings. What do you mean you didn't know that men wore rings? Clay already told us that his parents were married for 20 something years, did your father not wear a ring? I think that Clay was trying to play her. Then AD corrects him and says, no, obviously men wear rings, not during the engagement process, but at the marriage, you're gonna have a ring to wear too. Clay is not stupid. You've been to a wedding before at some point in your life. You saw them exchange rings. Whatever the case, Clay then goes a step further to say, yeah, I don't want a blinged out ring. I want a low key gold ring. That right there let me know that if you know the type of ring that you want, you know that men wear rings. Why are you trying to play with her? Anyways, by the end of their date, we see AD in her confessional and she is saying that she is open to being intimate with him. We'll see how their night goes and if it turns magical, who knows? So let's move on to Kenneth and Brittany. When we see them, they're getting ready for bed. She has all of her makeup off. He still likes how she looks without makeup, which is a great sign because she said that that's what she loves to do the most is take off her makeup. They get in the bed and Kenneth does say something that I want to start with us every night before we go to bed. I want us to unpack our day, check in with one another. Let's talk about what went well and what didn't go so well to make sure that we're on the same page. And I thought, oh, this is very different. And I'm just in shock. So is Brittany, but Brittany is going with it. And she is like, okay, I can do this. And they start having conversation. So of course, they not getting physical. So the camera goes away. There's nothing more to see. They are goody two shoes at this point. So then we go over to Jimmy and Chelsea. They're also getting ready for bed. Chelsea has a series of questions for Jimmy. She asked him at the reveal, what is the first thing that you noticed about me? Which is a fair question. She's curious, especially with them doing this blind experiment. What is the first thing that you noticed about me? He is very hesitant in his response and he's awkward and he says, well, um, um, uh, well, I noticed that you have very pretty teeth. They're just 
like big square white teeth. They're very pretty teeth. <sighs> Jimmy, why did you say that? First of all, Chelsea does not look pleased with his answer. Now him responding and saying that he noticed her teeth, to me, that equates to when people see someone's newborn baby for the first time and they still don't look fully cooked or the baby is just not a cute baby. So they're like, oh, their feet, their toes are so cute. Oh, look at their cute little outfit. That's so sweet. They're not mentioning anything about how the baby actually looks. They're just pointing out small things that they can try to compliment them on and avoiding the obvious. That is what Jimmy is doing. She says, so you didn't notice anything else about me? He's thinking to himself, what do you want me to say? I feel like you're trapping me into a corner. That is what you could tell he's thinking in his head. Instead, Jimmy says, I mean, well, you have big boobs. That still wasn't enough for her. She was just like, I mean, I just want to make sure that you still like me. Do you still feel the same way about me that you felt about me when we're in the pods now that you see me? You can see that the wheels are turning in her head and she's unsure of how he feels about her and whatever insecurities she already had, it's starting to bleed out at this point. And so she's trying to ask him and he's trying to act natural. He doesn't know how to act natural. I am just going to say a quick prayer for this couple because I don't know how this is going to go. But at this point, we've seen all of the couples fall asleep and the episode comes to an end. Boom. Let's get to episode Six. Episode six is titled Feeling Uncomfy. So the episode starts off with Johnny and Amy. You can tell that they're laughing and they're playful and they're getting more comfortable with one another. There's no conflict, but I personally don't think anything intimacy wise has gone down at this point. Next, we get over to Kenneth and Brittany. Now, Kenneth and Brittany, they chose the date that I probably would have wanted they chose the couple's massage. So you see them getting up from the massage. They seem so relaxed, so calm. Brittany said, oh, that's great. We should just do this every week. That was everything. And Kenneth said, yeah, maybe we can consider adding that to the budget. So, so far, so good with them. Let's move on to the next couple. That would be Jeremy and Laura. They are actually on an archery date. They are doing bow and arrow. Now, we're starting to see some tendencies of hers where her OCD is kicking in and she kind of picks at little things, i.e. his Hawaiian shirts that he told her that he loves, that he has been wearing from time to time on this trip. So she's making mention of that, but he's still just brushing her off, laughing her off. He's enjoying the date. He knows that they have playful banter back and forth, so he's not actually taking her serious. But this girl is good with a bow and arrow, so maybe you should watch your back, okay? Then we move on to Clay and AD. They have decided to go to the bar on the resort, and they pull the cover off of the drinks at the bar, and there's smoke coming out of them. It looks really cool. I don't know what type of drink that is, but it looked like a good experience. So right as they're about to start drinking their drinks, AD says that she doesn't do pointless calories. Clay says, I don't even count calories. She then presents the question, what if I get out of shape? He said, oh no, that's, that's not happening. You're not going to get out of shape. She was like, well, it's possible. Like, what about when I start having kids, women's bodies change? And so Clay says, no, I'm going to be hard on you. I'm going to be working on you. Let's get it together. Go, go, go. You need to lose this weight. You need to trim it down. And she said, no, why, why would you do that? Why would you be hard on me? He said, well, aren't personal trainers hard on you? She said, yes, but you would be my husband, not my personal trainer. I still need to know that you love me and that you will support me. Now, she wasn't saying I'm going to have kids and I'm just going to get sloppy and just all out of whack. She was never alluding to that, but somehow they get into talking about therapy. She lets him know that she just started going to therapy last year. Clay does say that he's never been to therapy, but he actually would like to go to therapy and he would like to go to couples therapy. Something else I had to point out about their date is that even though she's been in therapy, she even admitted the fact that she doesn't feel like she deserves love because she doesn't have it. 
that also made me think about her broken relationship with her father who is now deceased. Maybe she didn't feel the love from him. So why should I feel like I deserve it from anyone else? They both have a lot they need to work on. She also is concerned about the fact that on her wedding day, there's not going to be anybody to walk her down the aisle. So Clay gets another point. He steps up and says, well, you have a great relationship with your brothers. I'm sure that they can walk you down the aisle. And I thought that that was very reassuring. And it's good to see him reassure her for a change rather than her always being the one to reassure him. I thought that was good. So this date had some highs and lows, but it ended on a good note. Now we get to Jimmy and Chelsea once again. They have a date where they go and they lay out on the beach and she starts to ask him, what's his type? This is a reoccurring theme for Chelsea. And she starts guessing for him. You're probably used to having like the small petite type and a certain type of look. And he is trying to be as respectful as possible. He's being placed in a lot of uncomfortable situations, but Chelsea just keeps pushing. Chelsea says to him, is there anything about me that you're apprehensive about? And he says, no, you're my best friend. But he's just trying to say something to reassure her because obviously she needs a lot, a lot, a lot of reassurance. I think that Chelsea senses that there's some apprehension there with him and she's trying to force it out of him and get him to say it. But you know, Jimmy, Jimmy doesn't like uncomfortable conversations. Just stop pushing it because you're not going to get the answer that you're seeking. Moving right along. Now we get to the part of the experiment that I look forward to the most because this is where the drama always unfolds. So it's nighttime, they're on the beach, they have an open bar, everyone is so excited and the drama begins. So first we have the girls sitting off to the side, they're catching up with each other, but Kenneth is noticing Brittany doesn't have a chair and he goes and gets her a chair, picks it up and sets it down so that she has a chair to sit in. And the girls are so impressed by this. They're gushing. They're saying, oh, that is so sweet. He's so attentive to you. Brittany says, I'm just so lucky. As the girls are sitting there, they start talking about package sizes. And so, so many people are shocked by this because when you see the men over to the side talking to each other, they're talking about, I'm so in love with my girl. Are you happy? Are you satisfied? They're not having the raunchy conversations, but the women are having the detailed conversations like, tell me what's packing. And I thought that was so funny because to be honest, nine times out of 10, women are more comfortable speaking about those things with each other. They might not go into too much detail because women are also territorial, but women are the ones that are quickly comfortable having those type of conversations. So I thought that that was funny to watch. So we see Jimmy and Chelsea talking to each other and Jimmy says to Chelsea, that woman is stacked. And the woman he's referring to is A.D., now, I was caught off guard by this the first time I watched it. Why are you even mentioning how another woman looks to your fiance? Your fiance that obviously has some insecurities that she's working through, you've had to reassure her time and time again, yet you're going to point out to her that AD is stacked. Stacked as in you can place a stack of bookshelves on her butt, they will sit there and they will not move. She is a shelf that stacked. Now, I was upset that he said this comment to her. However, I have watched an interview of his where the interviewer asked him about this comment that he made, and he gave us a little bit more background information. Jimmy said that when they were in their room preparing to go to this couple's meetup, Chelsea was actually the one that said, I'm so happy to see AD. I'm looking forward to it. I love her so much. And wait till you see this girl. Her body is amazing. This girl is stacked. Chelsea said that. So now when we see him at the beach and he's talking to Chelsea and he's saying that girl is stacked, he is just following up on their conversation that they had in their room. Netflix didn't show us that part, but that's why he said it. That gives a little bit more context. 
I guess that makes it okay because technically she said it first and he is just saying, oh, now I see what you saw. I agree with you. She is stacked. Instead of leaving it there, Chelsea decided to blow up the spot. So Chelsea then yells across the beach to AD and says, hey, AD, Jimmy said that you were stacked. AD, how you get a butt like that? So AD says, oh, squats and Jesus, squats and Jesus. Then she starts twerking and showing how her butt is stacked. You know, AD, the person that doesn't want to be sexualized, but she started being sexual in front of everybody. Also, your fiance is there. Why are you twerking in front of everybody? That didn't sit well with me. I'd be seeing red flags with AD too, but okay, play into it. Right after this happens, then Jimmy goes over to actually hug AD. Then he decides to chat with her. Okay, so in the midst of them having a conversation, which he's saying positive things about Chelsea and how they're doing good, and he's asking AD if she's happy with Clay and all of this and that, Chelsea is feeling extremely insecure and she goes and sits off to the side with Amy. She's telling her that she feels sick to her stomach. She's so mad about the comment that Jimmy made, although she planted the seed in his head back in their room, but whatever. And she says he just spun her around and did a 360, which in Jimmy's defense, he did not spin her around. AD spun herself around while she was talking to him. Another thing I didn't agree with, another red flag of AD, another instance of her sexualizing herself, but whatever. Back to Chelsea and Amy. One thing that Amy did say to Chelsea that I a thousand percent agreed with, Amy said, you should feel like the only girl in the world with your man. And I can say that that is exactly how Johnny acts with Amy, but that is certainly not how Chelsea feels with Jimmy. Chelsea says that it was just so wrong for him to bring that up to her after he's seen AD and she felt uncomfortable, so she didn't know what to do. So she pointed it out to AD to play along with it. Girl, you should not have played along if you were uncomfortable. That is sending him mixed signals. You should have said something. But since you acted like it was okay and you went along with it and you planted the seed in his mind to begin with, that is why he did it. Moving right along. So then we see Jimmy and AD. And what I noticed about AD is that she certainly has a flirtatious personality. I wouldn't even call it flirtatious. I would label her as somewhat of a seductress. You can't just say you're a nice person and you're being so sweet. The seductive eyes she was giving him as they were talking, as if she's trying to pull him in or as if she knows that he likes what he sees. I did not like that at all. Be respectful. Be respectful of the fact that you consider Chelsea to be a friend of yours and the way that you're looking at her fiance is not okay. To end off their chat that they had with each other, AD said, I loved every minute of this conversation. We should talk more. About what? So you could do another 360 spin and give him bedroom eyes? Okay. So then the camera pans to Chelsea, Laura, and Amy. Jimmy goes over to them just to check in on them. And he asks if they're all happy. Laura's happy. Amy's happy. Everything is all good. He smiles and he walks away. Meanwhile, Chelsea looks bothered, but she's trying to play it cool. She also looks like she's probably a few drinks in at this point. Then the camera pans to AD and Clay. AD and Clay are checking in with each other. Kenneth notices and he walks up to them and he says, okay, black love, I see y'all. And they're smiling, they're all good. And he starts talking to AD and Clay gives them the space that they need. He's like, hey, I'm gonna let y'all catch up, cool. So while they're talking, AD seems to be talking normal, but that's because Kenneth does not come off as like, oh girl, you so fine. I'm just so pleased to be talking to you. He doesn't come off as thirsty. He actually is bigging up Brittany and he's speaking very highly of her and he's happy with the choice that he made in picking her. Then AD really frustrated me at this point because AD asked him if he's ever dated a white girl. He said, no. But then she says, are you concerned that she will be able to raise black children? Because if y'all have kids, do you think she can handle that? And I thought that that was a hater move. 
I really thought it was when this man started talking to you, he spoke very highly of her and the way that she treats him and everything. Then I feel like AD started planting seeds of doubt in his mind. Why are you showing concern? You and Kenneth are not friends. You need to worry about your own relationship rather than trying to insert yourself in theirs. Yes, she's a white woman, but her kids won't be fully black. They will be black and white. They will be mixed. They will be her kids as well, too. I'm sure, just like you, she is more than capable of raising her own children. I don't think this is her first rodeo when it comes to dating a black man. It's his first rodeo, so why are you planting seeds of doubt? I did not respect that. I didn't like that. Just my opinion, moving right along. Then we get to Bean Dip Gate. Bean Dip Gate, let me paint this picture for y'all. We have Jimmy, Jeremy, and Clay. The guys are sitting there, they're talking. Now we have AD walk up to Clay to check on him, sits on his lap. And Jeremy took this opportunity to try to create conversation with AD. And he says that, oh, Laura loves you so much. She talks about you all the time. Oddly enough, she told me that I should bean dip you when I see you. And I was like, what? Why would I do that? That's no, I'm not going to do that. At the time, Clay and AD didn't know that it was inappropriate because they, just like me, were thinking, what the heck is bean dip? Who, who even thinks of bean dip? I don't even eat bean dip. What bean dip? What is bean dip? He basically described that it is like when you scoop up bean dip, like tapping a woman's boob. And I'm thinking, what? First of all, that is very awkward. That is weird. That is uncomfortable. Why would your fiance even joke about the fact that when you see her, you should bean dip her? Why would she say that? And then why would you repeat it as if it is worthy of a chuckle, ha ha ha, to this man, Clay, and his fiance? So once they understood what the meaning of it was, they were very uncomfortable. Somehow they started talking across to Laura and they started saying bean dip and Laura is furious. Why did he say that to you guys? And then she's saying it was a joke. It was a joke. And Clay and AD are not taking it as a joke. Jeremy is frustrated because he feels like people are blowing this out of proportion. And AD gets up to go and talk to Laura, trying to explain to her you shouldn't have joked about it at all, period, because that's not a joke. That is a violation that makes me uncomfortable. But Laura is still not hearing her because in this moment, Laura just doesn't want to take any accountability. Laura is frustrated because she feels like her fiance, he has put her out there on front street, made her look bad. She never expected him to say this out loud. Why would he do that? Then Jeremy comes over and tries to talk to Laura, but you can tell they are now at odds. They are not seeing eye to eye. Nobody's listening to each other. Neither one of them want to take accountability for their actions. Jeremy gets so frustrated. He gets up and he's like, I want to go home. And she said, you want to go home as in home to the room or suite or you want to go home home? He said, I want to go home home. Jeremy was ready to get on a plane and leave the country. That is how irritated he was with her that quick over something that he said that it was inappropriate for him to say it to them. Yeah, finally, we get towards the end of the episode and we see Jimmy and Chelsea and they go back to their room. Chelsea is distraught. She's crying and she is confronting him. That was so rude. That was so inappropriate. The comment you made about AD and then you go and talk to her and then you spun her around. Jimmy is confused. What are you talking about? I didn't spin her around. And what were you saying about me to all these people? Jimmy is saying, I only spoke highly of you. I only said good things about you, which is true. I do think he was flirty with AD, but she ain't even seen that part yet. When she see that on TV, that's going to be a whole nother argument. But she is mad about it. And she said, you should have never made me feel that way. The argument keeps going on and on. And I'm just watching. I'm getting a headache. This couple is not going to work just my opinion. Y'all let me know how y'all felt about this episode. We are definitely in for a treat when it comes to episode 
seven and eight. I will get that posted next. Thank you for sticking in here with me on this video. I hope you enjoyed. Please like the video. If you have not, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification bell so you can see when the next video comes out. And until next time, I love you all. Bye-bye.